some of the, the different looks that you give offenses on third down with you know, Darren Lee at that rush end spot, just your, your package there. Have you, how has the defense progressed in being able, I know when you got here, you talked about maybe giving some different looks on the third down. Have you been, have you been pleased with what you guys are being able to do on that down with your personnel and your looks? Yeah, so far we're progressing nicely. We're getting more and more different looks and uh, different uh, types of rushes that we can show on offense. And I think we've been pretty productive with that here in the last couple of games. Really overall third down, I think we've been decent uh, outside of the Virginia Tech game. I think we've gotten progressively better each week, and I like the direction that we're headed. I know you're just worried about the next game, but a little broader picture. When you got here, I know you talked about your goals as a coach down the line. Just for any assistant coach here, what do you sort of absorb from Urban Meyer on a daily or weekly basis just on how you run a program, how you run a team, how you go about your business as a head coach? Well, the thing that I, I've taken from Coach Meyer is he has a very clear vision of what he wants the program to look like, uh, what he wants the assistant coaches to do, what they, what the way they handle their business, the way they coach, the way they build relationships with the players, what he wants to see uh, X's and O's wise on offense, defense, special teams, the way he invests into the players. Uh, with our Real Life Wednesday programs, all of our leadership developing, um, the uh, uh, hydration and nutrition part of it that, that we do here in the program. The thing that I've taken uh, from here, from him being in this program, is uh, all those things, it's a clear vision of what he wants, and the investment that he makes in the players is outstanding. Uh, front row here, right, Tim? Yeah, Chris, uh, you, you won against Rutgers last year, didn't you? I did, yes. Yeah. What did you take away from that game? You guys had a big lead, and then you know they came back on you and stuff. Just what's yeah. your recollection of that? But also, what are you telling your guys to be ready for? Obviously, they got rough region now and stuff. But go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, to start, the offenses are very similar. Uh, Kyle Flood, head coach, has been the offensive coordinator there in the past, and uh, he obviously has a philosophy that he wants to see on offense because it's hold, held true throughout the last few years, even with different offensive coordinators. Uh, the quarterback, Nova, is a good player. You can see the, the development and growth that he's made from last year to this year under uh, Coach Friedgen being there. Uh, the receivers are good, um, but they have a system and a philosophy that they believe in. I think they're executing it well. How would you describe their system? Uh, it's more of a pro style system. Uh, a lot of 21, what we call 21 personnel, two backs and a tight end. They'll give you some 22 personnel, two backs and two tight ends. It's a little unconventional, you know, uh, uh, from what we've seen so far this year. But uh, they do a nice job of mixing up their run game and, and uh, play action passes off of it. Do you feel, you and Luke, do y'all feel better equipped now to call things, to do things that you maybe didn't feel five games ago? Or just what's the the sense, I guess, of confidence, whatever you want to call it, on the defensive side? Well, I think the development has been great here the last few year, or last few weeks. You know, coming out of that Navy game, uh, the opening game of the year, we invested so much time and energy into that game, uh, and we had to to be able to win it against uh, an offense like that. That it did set us back a little bit for the games two and three of the season, but I think we're starting to catch up and we're starting to get where we feel like we, we should be or, or wanted to be a few weeks ago. But the development, the growth, the, the mental understanding of what we're doing, the execution of what we're doing is a lot better here the last few weeks. said it's kind of an unconventional offense. It's really un unconventional because you're not used to seeing it. So yeah, very yes, conventional. yes. How are you guys looking forward to playing a that type of offense because you've been throwing the kitchen sink at you? Well, it, it's like anything in college football in this day. You've got to have a package that's flexible from week to week. You've got to be able to defend a no-huddle spread, uh, teams that throw it around all the time, to teams that pack it in and run. Just in this league alone, you look at the different offensive philosophies in the Big Ten from what we do here at Ohio State to a team like Iowa or Wisconsin, Michigan State, those pro-style teams that um, you know line up with two backs in the backfield. You know, you, so you've got to have a package that's pretty flexible. I think right now we feel good about where we're at, that our package is flexible enough that each week, you know, without a lot of changes, we can defend uh, different styles of offenses. And uh, Eli Apple's a guy playing, he's a Rutgers, I mean, he's a yeah. New Jersey guy. Uh, can you describe his development 
Uh, I think Eli's done a nice job in the first uh, half of the season. Uh, he's gotten his hands on some balls. He's got a couple interceptions. He's tackled well. Um, he's been in the right position most of the time. You know, Cincinnati was uh, a play that he gave up, and uh, you know we didn't play it right. He had should have had some help uh, there also. But overall, I think his growth and development and uh, maturity as a corner has uh, um, uh, been good, and uh, he's only got uh, unlimited potential to see where he can go throughout the rest of the season. Tony Gerdeman, the Ozone. I was, um, regarding Gary Nova, he's thrown a lot of yards, thrown a lot of touchdowns, he's thrown a lot of interceptions. How much of the, the bad that he had, the poor plays that he's made, do you guys focus on? Uh, well, they're there. I mean, you, you, you can't deny it. When you watch a quarterback in general, not just speaking of Gary Nova in general, you, you try to identify the things that rattle him, whether it be certain line games, certain pressure, certain coverages, things that can get into his head. See if there's a pattern uh, of the mistakes that a quarterback makes that, you, that you're noticing on film. And if you do, then you want to try to implement those things. So uh, there's a lot of things that he does well. He's done a nice job in the pocket. He's throwing the ball deep uh, very well this year. Uh, he's avoided pressure very well well this year. He scrambled well this year. Uh, but there are some things on film that you think, hey, maybe he, you know this or that uh, would maybe rattle him a little bit. And those are the things that we, had, we try to identify every week. Do you have to play him differently than you have previous quarterbacks this season? Do you think uh, that? Not necessarily. I mean, their style of offense uh, with it being more of a pro style attack is a little bit different maybe than you know what we would see in the, the previous weeks. And you got to uh, the, adjust to that more so than what you do uh, Gary Nova as an individual. Dave Biddle, Bucknuts. Uh, Coach Meyer touched on this a little bit last week. You guys are playing a lot more press coverage this year, um, but you're not bumping, you're not jamming the receivers at the line of scrimmage. He said he doesn't want his guys to lunge at the receivers because that's a good way to get beat deep. Can you talk more about the rationale? They're playing press coverage, but not jamming the wide receivers. Well, when you watch uh, corners or teams that uh, implement a lot of press technique, it, it, there, there's not a lot of actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. You, you don't play press technique with your hands you play it with your feet. You're basically playing basketball with the wide receiver. You want to be able to move your feet and cut that receiver off and make him fight for his release. When defensive backs get overly aggressive with their hands at the line of scrimmage and, and don't move their feet, they reach, they lunge, get overextended, that's when you're going to get beat. Uh, and with what we're doing, we're not necessarily closing the middle of the field with a middle safety. Uh, the last thing that we can have in, in our cover structure is a corner that doesn't have vertical control on a wide receiver. And that's when you lose the vertical control. How you lose vertical control is a corner that reaches and lunges and tries to play with his hands more so than his feet. Um, so, you, you know, the, the misnomer of press technique from a typical fan's point of view is, well, you got to get your hands on them. Well, no, you don't. You do if they're within striking distance of you, but you don't want to overextend your body uh, and basically lunge to be able to get your hands on a wide receiver. You want to be able to move your feet, keep the wide receiver within the framework of your body, and if you're able to do that and contact is able to be made with both hands, great. But if you're not, then you've you got to move your feet and you've got to be able to open your hips and run.